Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. Thanks for joining me on the Saturday night live stream, the live stream Q&A from Michigan where you can throw out questions and I'll do my best to get them answered. We're going to focus on DeFi tonight in the demo section, but we'll talk about Bitcoin, we'll talk about the news, the markets. Um, I said I'll take questions, I'll move crypto around, I'll try to do some demos for you guys. Uh, thanks for joining. Let's get this thing going. All right, so I'm here, mm -hmm. sort of, right. I got my crypto.com shirt on. Don't forget to check out the link down in the description below for crypto.com. One of my partners helps this web channel run, uh, helps me pay my bills, all that good stuff. So I got the rig going over here. Um, I usually, uh, it's water cool, it's cool stuff. So what I like to usually do is, uh, let's see, we turn this up, there we go, and we switch it over to white light, there we go. So I got a little light on the other side of my face. I really need to get two key lights, I and mean, I keep putting that off. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see here, we need to first switch my resolution here. I was a little bit behind in all the stuff that I normally do to get set up for this live stream. Uh, I've found that when I'm running my monitor in 4K, it's hard for you guys to see what I'm doing on my screen. So when I record videos and when I uh, do the live stream, I flip it down to HD so you guys can see my screen better. So let's pop out chat and see who's here. A lot of people, uh, a lot of questions already. That's good. Uh, let's pop this out. So I'll move it over here. And just let me do a quick greeting. Uh, we'll talk about... Um, let's see. Where were we? Uh, Roger. Roger had uh, some issues with Ledger Live, so we'll address that. Uh, 1066 Kitchen is here. Uh, we can talk about transferring from Binance. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, to help you besides helping you wait, but I will give you some tools to sort of maybe put your mind at ease when you're making a transfer. Uh, and it's taking a while, things happen. Uh, la, 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 la. EOS wallet, I can't help you with EOS. I've tried in the past, I gave up on EOS. I'm not a big fan of EOS. Never was able to get their fairy wallet to work right. Uh, and I kind of figured, well, if I can't get it done, then uh, how am I gonna expect my uh, my users to get it done. I don't know. Uh, maybe people in Asia have better luck. They're using Asian operating system or whatever. Or, I don't know. There, there's bugs. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just gave up on it, and it's been a couple years now. So I'm sorry I can't help you with EOS. Uh, Diatom Ranger from Kentucky. Uh, don't know much about the NFT. Uh, I'm not sure what that acronym means. <laughs> NFT, not Final Trust. I don't know. Um, okay, we'll get to Buddy's question. Let me just greet Media Man. I am not, I am not. I asked Rex the same question last week, and to be honest, Ledger Live and EOS just don't mix very well. Yeah, I think maybe, I don't know. I, I It was, for me, it was the fairy wallet. Uh, getting Just getting it to work, period. Uh, there's this whole deal where you got to find somebody out there that is like a third party that'll that you can pay to join the, the blockchain because it's like you can't join the EOS blockchain unless you already know somebody. And so since I don't know anybody, I got to pay somebody. And it was just, I don't know. I just couldn't get it to work. It seemed dicey to me. Randy is here. Howard is here. David Howard, hello from the UK. Uh, Celsius app. No, I don't think I've used that one yet. Hmm. Uh, Sutbox Sutty is here from the UK. That's cool. Uh, I'm glad I said that about EOS. Yeah, EOS. Mm. Anyway, uh, you know, maybe I'm just getting old and cranky, like the cop from Godfather. Remember, he punched Michael in the face and broke his jaw. <laughs> I'm just too cranky. My old job, I'm cranky. All right, so uh, let's jump into the news because I got some uh, cool stuff to show you guys. This is a great story. I like this story because it's from CNN, right? CNN, right? I'm usually like showing you uh news from like coindesk and uh coin 
well, the, the other two, one of the two that I usually use, right? Uh, crypto news. We got Coin Telegraph and Coin Desk, right? No, this is CNN, right? CNN. Square just bought fifty million dollars worth of Bitcoin. Uh, this occurred on Thursday, and it uh, gave a little boost to Bitcoin. Not a huge boost. Uh, Bitcoin had been kind of stuck in that uh, between ten and eleven range. Um, since early September, I mean, when Bitcoin fell down to like, I don't know, uh, 10.2, it still stayed above 10 all month, which was pretty cool. I don't know, it may have just briefly dipped below 10. I'm not sure. But uh, it, so it was had been going back and forth. There were some, there were some things in the news, uh, but Bitcoin weathered very well. Bad news. The, the KuCoin hack earlier in the month. Uh, the uh, the indictment of the uh, BitMEX guys, uh, it weathered that really well without crashing 30%, you know, stayed above 10, really good. Uh, I don't know, it was like around 10, 6, I'm not sure where it was exactly the day this news broke, but that popped it up to like 10, 8, 10, 9, somewhere in there. Uh, it was a, a good little bump, like a 1%, 2% bump when this news came out, right? So Square, if you're not aware, is the company that owns uh, the Cash app. And if you're also not aware, you can buy and sell Bitcoin on the Cash app. It's an app that you use on your phone, uh, iOS and uh, Android. And, uh, you, I mean, it started off as just a way to send money to your friends, you know, or split the bill. Uh, you connect it to your bank or your debit card. You can load it up with cash, and then you can send cash to other people. I mean, you can send, uh, you can pay your bills with it. I mean, some people do. A lot of people accept cash from the Cash App. But then they added uh, a feature where you could buy Bitcoin in the Cash App. I guess I might as well show you guys that while we're talking about it. But um, the Jack Dorsey, who is the CEO of Twitter, of course also uh, is involved in Square. He's the CEO of Square, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> His Grand Serene Highness of T Square. Uh, they bought 4,709 4, Bitcoins. Said it was a great investment. And I love the, uh, the statement. We believe that Bitcoin has the potential to be a more ubiquitous currency in the future. Bam, right there. Bam, bam, bam. As it grows in adoption, we intend to learn and participate in a disciplined way. This has been uh, the saving grace of Bitcoin over the last year or so, is that uh, they're starting to accept it on its own terms without calling it, you know, cr criminal money, gangster money, um, you know, and this leak of the big bank laundering scandal uh, in the not too distant past was also a big help to Bitcoin because, you know, we it was revealed that the banks were laundering, you know, trillions of dollars for criminals. Uh, and so, you know, now you're going to point the finger at Bitcoin. Ha ha ha. All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is great news for Bitcoin. Uh, big news uh, for the mainstream. So it's a great story. I've got it linked down in the description below. Um, and then the other story here, not that story. This is not that story. What happened to that story? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm, I thought I had linked more stories down below. And so when I jumped on the computer, we went out to dinner and came back. And I uh, realized that I only linked two stories. But I'm going to pop a few down more down in there. We'll see. Uh, U.S. Attorney General releases guidelines for enforcing crypto laws. This would have been a big scare for the, the whole entire uh, crypto market, in Bitcoin in particular. It was not. Uh, the market weathered this news very well. It's uh, not really an indictment of crypto in general. Uh, it's guidelines for regulation and legal legalization, right? How are we going to, you know, what is legal and what's not? And that was, you know, clarification, which really is good news for Bitcoin. Not so good news for privacy coins. Uh, there were a few comments there uh, in this article uh, about privacy coins and cross-chain transfers. If you're not familiar with that, that just means like you go to a kind of exchange where you can swap one 
uh, coin for another. Um, you can't really do it on you can't really do it on Uniswap. You can swap one ERC20 token for another, uh, but like CoinSwap, CoinSwitch Pro, you can swap like Bitcoin for uh, Monero or Monero for Bitcoin. And I think that's kind of where the trail goes cold, right? That's kind of like when you're getting chased by dogs and you jump into the river, right? <laughs> so the dogs, there, I went orange again. Damn it. Urgh. Why does that happen? Sorry, guys. It's one of my pet peeves. I don't know what it is, but all of a sudden, like, I turn orange. Anyway. Uh, okay, so uh, they talked about... Uh, so they lose the scent, right? The dog loses the scent. So uh, they don't like that, right? Uh, the, the powers that be, the, the police and the, the feds and the SEC and all these guys, they do not like it when they can't follow the money, right? Uh, so Zcash, Monero, and Dash indicative of possible criminal behavior. It doesn't say criminal behavior. It doesn't say that if you use Monero uh, or you own Monero or Zcash or Dash that you are committing a crime, right? It just says that's, that you might be, right? That you're suspect. Um, I don't know. Um, I, privacy is privacy, right? I think, uh, you know, we all deserve financial privacy. We all should have it. That's my belief. Whether or not it's a right in this country, I don't know. I don't know that there's any privacy left in this country. Just my two cents worth. Uh, and if we go through, I'm sure they could like come up with all sorts of laws and executive orders and everything and say, excuse me, Mr. Nisley, but according to this, you do not have the right to privacy. <laughs> we took that away a while back. You just weren't reading the news correctly, right? You weren't reading between the lines when we announce this new, you know. Anyway, uh, so w let me go. <laughs> uh, this is our big story here. Uh, 12K Bitcoin uh, is back on the table, right? Uh, let's put this, uh, first of all, let's um, let's cap it, right? We'll see how uh, old Crypto Dad does his little magic, right? Let's cap it. Uh, all right, let's cap it. There, let's uh, cap it. Let's uh, put it down here in the description of our video, wherever it is. There we go. Um, and by the way, please check out. Oh, come on, man! It was supposed to be capped. What happened? Copy. I thought I. Oh, man, <laughs> you think you got something capped, and then what happens? You try to do something fast while you're talking and it just doesn't happen for you right there we go all right now we can go back over to this guy uh we don't really need to put it in my uh folder because we've got it pulled up now so uh, i'll skip that step let's just paste this in here like that there we go uh, and then we'll save that so you guys can see it i hate to talk about a news story where you guys are like oh man where is that news story i wish i had it because i don't well, uh, I try to link all the news stories that I talk about down in the description below here so you guys can uh, check them out at your leisure. So let's just get this title here. We'll copy that. Let's cap it. Let's paste it in here. We'll cap it so that it looks nice. Right? We want it to look nice. We'll hit OK. Let's go down here. Apologize for not doing this ahead of time, but I didn't. <laughs> Damn it. Is it just me? Because I know that I just capped that. What's going on here? What is going on here? I don't know. All right, there we go. All right, and while we're on the subject of the description below, I've got some affiliate links you might want to check out. Crypto.com, Kraken, um, Bitbox2 hardware wallets, pretty cool wallet. Uh, Ledger Nano S or X, great wallets. Uh, Brave Browser, Binance uh, account, Binance US, and Coinbase. All right, and uh, some other interesting links that you might uh, find it, uh, educational or interesting, so to speak. All right, so we'll keep it there. And I think we just need to cover these two stories here, right? So Bitcoin 12K back on the table after BTC rallies above 11.4. That was last night. Uh, like around eight or nine, Bitcoin was had been in between 
10 and 11 for like 30 days, I guess. I don't know what it was. And then all of a sudden I just checked my phone and boom, it was like uh, had shot over 11, right? So, and that's kind of where we are now. 11379 um, huh, ads. I, I really hate when I get like political, uh, what do you call it? Uh, solicitations over through my text. This really bothers me. Uh, I don't like to get involved in politics, but I would like to point this out that my son, who is seven, has decided who he wants, who he's for, right? He doesn't know. He is for Trump. And the reason he is for Trump is because he watches YouTube all day and Biden is is always interrupting his YouTube videos with his ads, much, much more than Trump, apparently. Uh, so my son doesn't like Biden. And so I asked him, I was like, whoa, whoa. He goes, why don't you like Biden? He goes, because Biden puts up too many ads on my YouTube. So he's watching like Geometry Dash YouTube videos and Biden's jumping in. Why would Biden put ads on Geometry Dash YouTube videos? That's seriously, I mean, if they're meant for kids, and YouTube knows they're meant for kids. I don't mean to be getting into YouTube bashing right here. But why are kids' videos getting interrupted with political ads? Seriously. I mean, shouldn't they be advertising, like, Spongebob cereal or, you know, whatever? Spongebob cereal. Yeah, Spongebob cereal. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, I di but I digress, right? 12K Bitcoin is in, sh is in shot, right? Okay, we're not, I haven't wasted too much time talking about all this, right? So uh, the market's looking good for Bitcoin. Uh, 12K is back on the table. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, there has been, uh, over the last several months, there has been a worrying correlation between Bitcoin and the stock market. Uh, stock market goes down. Bitcoin tends to get dragged down with it, which is quite distressing for me. Um, I don't know when the stock market goes up. Bitcoin, I guess, goes up too. Um, I wish they really weren't that coordinated, co correlated, but they do happen to seem like they're pretty correlated lately. Uh, but I don't know about this burst here. That This burst here happened Friday night after the U.S. stock market was closed. So good sign, right? And apparently there was good volume on this too, which is another good sign, right? High volume uptrend. Right. And then uh, let's look at this story today. Just kind of came out. I haven't even read the article yet, but I linked it down below. Um, crypto mom, Hester Pierce, who's been around, uh, has been a big, uh, the people in crypto really like her. She's pro crypto. Uh, they call her crypto mom. She's a member of the SEC. Uh, she was a junior member, I guess, or a new member back in 2017, and she got uh, re-elected, reappointed, whatever they do. Um, and she's an advocate for crypto. Uh, crypto. And the SEC uh, is slowly coming around uh, to uh, take crypto seriously. Really? You know, because they're not, what's the word I'm trying to It's like they're not going to make or break crypto, but they are going to, uh, they're, they're going to shape the uh, sentiment of the mainstream person as far as crypto goes um, if they take it seriously, right? And before, they really just weren't taking it seriously. That was That's my take on that. They, there were a lot of people applying for EFT, exchange traded funds for Bitcoin, and they were just getting rejected by the, the SEC out of hand, right? Uh, and their excuse was always, it's used by criminals, it has no intrinsic value, it's full of fraud, right? Those were their big three, you know, used by criminals, no intrinsic value, and it's, you know, there's too much fraud, right? That's, they've just been saying that over and over again. Well, it's time to, like, pull your head out of the sand and recognize crypto for what it is and start to take it seriously and regulate it, you know, whatever, so I think the time has finally come, right? And I'm happy. All right, so uh, that's the news. Um, let's talk a little bit. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Roger uh, was having some issues earlier. I'm just going to unplug my mouse here. 
and plug in my Ledger device, right? We've got a Ledger device here. I've got the Ledger Nano X, which is a, a hardware wallet for cryptocurrency. Um, it um, supports ver uh, several cryptocurrencies, quite a few, actually. Not as many as people would like, I guess. I get a lot of people, how come, you know, the Ledger doesn't support every crypto? Well, I mean, come on. I'm, I, but, you know, uh, I guess I'm getting old and grouchy here. But uh, I guess there's some, there's technical issues that for every crypto that Ledger supports, there's like, they have to write the app, right? They have to, you know, they have to, su su you know, uh, get the support. They have to vet the coin. They have to figure out, you know, it's not, you just can't support every single crypto out there. And uh, I get a lot of people are upset because uh, they might support a particular crypto, but not in Ledger Live. And then, you know, people get mad about that. You know, oh, why can't I see my ADA in Ledger Live? Well, I don't know. You know, they've, they've, I would assume that they would want to do that. Maybe it's, there's technical issues, right? With the programming and the coding and all that, whatever. I don't think there's some sort of, you know, conspiracy where they say to themselves, oh, no, we can't support, you know, ADA and Ledger Live because, you know, the powers that be haven't, you know, I don't know, right? I think it's technical, right? I think it's just they haven't got it done yet, whatever it is that they need to do. Um, and not every coin maybe would lend itself to being supported in Ledger Live, right? But there are quite a few coins that are supported in Ledger Live. Right. And so this is what Ledger Live looks like. It's a, a piece of software that you can download onto your computer. And uh, let's not save that. And it runs separate from your web browser. Right. It's it's a piece of software that gets installed on your computer and it shows you uh, you can manage your cryptocurrency accounts in here. Now, the real uh, crypt and it's freaking out right now it's say it's pause right and these like numbers here mean that it's not syncing up properly so maybe there's some issues with their server tonight because i can see that they're not really synced up right but i'm seeing dollar values uh so roger was telling me i don't see any dollar values on any of my tokens i'm freaking out what do i do and so i told him well you know it happens sometimes occasionally uh, you're gonna not see any value on over here. Now this, these two that are not showing any value, though that's that's a feature, not a glitch, right? That's those are not supported yet. The pricing is not supported yet in Ledger Live. So we've got Ledger Live support, full support. We've got Ledger Live uh, support. I can see the the token, but I can't see pricing information, right? And then you've got I can I can save the token on my I can save the private key for the token on my device, but I can't see it in Ledger Live. So there's all there's all sorts of flavors of support. So here we see a coin, data coin. I have a thousand eleven hundred of them, and there I'm not seeing any pricing information, and that's because they don't support it yet. But I guess there are days where you might open up Ledger Live, and all of these would be zero for you. Oh my God! But if you see the coin, right? If you see like, okay, there's BTC. I have 0.06 BTC, but it says zero over here. I'm not gonna freak out because I know that 0.6 Bitcoin is has a dollar value, right? Maybe not to Ledger Live, but if I transfer it to Binance, it will have a value, right? Bitcoin has a value. Just because Ledger Live isn't giving you the current dollar value doesn't mean that your coins have suddenly become worthless. It just means that Ledger Live is a little glitched out, right? So don't freak out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's messed up. I can see that it's not syncing right. And uh, see, it keeps trying to sync, and then it says pause. So I don't know, maybe something with the Ledger servers right now. But I'd also like to point out, when you see this little blue dot over here, that means you should go to the manager and uh, update some of your apps, right? That's what that means. So um, you'll you'll want to allow Ledger Manager on your device, right? Let's pull this in here. Oops. 
so you can see what's going on. It's on the wrong side. That's weird. Let's move it over to the side I like. Actually, let's leave it over on this side for now. Uh, okay, so we hit both buttons here to allow Ledger Manager, and we should see that there's apps that need to be updated. Even though it's, it's not syncing up with the pricing information, uh, the apps look like they're ready to go, right? Maybe those are local, right? So let's hit update all and just let those apps update. This is another issue uh, that uh, I, I, I was talking to someone that in my comments. Uh, I think I in last week's video, I said something about, um, I forget what it was, but it had something to do with the, the uh, Oh, I said uh, when you when I use MetaMask, I don't like to use my Ledger-based MetaMask account because sometimes when I go to sign transactions, it doesn't work right. And the commenter, who's who's a, a, a viewer of mine, uh, you know, watches a lot of my videos, said something along the lines of, "The only difference is that you're hitting buttons." And I said, um, "Not, uh, I disagree." respectfully, but it's more than you're just hitting buttons because as you notice there, those apps needed to be updated. So there are times where you're dealing with uh, MetaMask or Ethereum or something and you go to sign the transaction and it glitches out when you try to sign it. Uh, it's just another layer of complication, right? So that's why when I do MetaMask and I'm in Uniswap, I use a standalone MetaMask account that's not connected to my ledger to avoid any ledger issues when it comes time to sign the transaction, right? So anyway, uh, now you can see we, we managed to get Ledger Live updated, right? So whenever you see that blue dot, you need to update apps, right? Well, let's go back to accounts and is it gonna give us, oh, it looks like it's, okay. See, now we got the green check marks. So it's synced up. And as you can see, these are empty. They got zero, zero, uh, but I'm getting pricing. So Roger, I hope you get end up getting pricing. If you cannot ever, uh, there's some things you could do. You can uh, you can clear cash, right? If you go over here uh, to general um, help, there's a clear cash which might help that situation. You might clear cash and then try again. Maybe relaunch and see if you get pricing information. If that doesn't work then uh, this reset ledger live will like wipe your preferences, but you will have to re-add all of your accounts. But that might be the, you know, the drastic measure that you need to take if you're like continuing to have this issue. Okay, so enough about ledger live for the moment. Let me check what's going on with uh, questions. I don't want to leave anybody out, make anybody mad by not answering their questions. Oh, oh, we talked uh, Kitchen 1066 Kitchen. I hope you're still here. Um, let's go over to Binance US. Um, you were on Binance proper, I guess. You said you just said Binance, but you said you sent some crypto. All right, and it's it hasn't arrived. It's been four hours. Um, First thing you'll want to do is if you don't see it on your, uh, and you said you sent it to your, uh, from from Binance to my Coinbase ETH wallet. Oh, okay. Well, that would be your like your phone based ETH wallet, right? Uh, let's do this back. And it it may have shown up by now. I don't know. Um, hopefully, this thing's going to work for me. Please work. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm assuming you're talking about this, the Coinbase Wallet app, right? Uh, the Coinbase Wallet app is a uh, a standalone, non-custodial wallet for your phone. The private key is stored on your device. You have a backup phrase, right? It's by Coinbase, but it's not your Coinbase app, right? It's a different thing. It's a wallet. That's what I'm assuming you're talking about. Right. And so you said, OK, I want to receive some Ethereum. Uh, you copied that address into your clipboard or whatever. And then you went over to your Binance account and you said, OK, I want to send some ETH over there. So basically, when you uh, go over here, uh, you should go to deposit and withdrawal history. 
All right, and from here, uh, you can see it says deposit, and then uh, check this withdraw, and you'll wanna flip over to crypto, right? You wanna make sure that it's, that it says that, it, that it's there, right? That the outgoing transaction is there. Now, it's been four hours, so it's probably not processing anymore. But if you're pretty impatient and you send it and it's like 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, you can go over here to the outgoing withdrawal history and just make sure that it's there. Sometimes it'll say uh, failed, right? Uh, and when it says that, it might be because of an address issue, but not with Ethereum usually, right? The Ethereum only has one address format. Some exchanges will fail if you try to send to a native SegWit address for Bitcoin, but, but not really with Ethereum. Okay, so the next thing you might want to check is, okay, what address did it say I sent it to? All right, here's an ETH transaction, right? If it says, oh, okay, I you just withdrew... Uh, on this day and time, uh, 0.29 ETH, and you sent it to this address right here, uh, is that the address of your Coinbase wallet? You might want to just double check that. Sometimes you accidentally uh, paste in the wrong address, right? So I've sent Bitcoin right back, or I've sent coins right back to myself. Like I accidentally sent it back to the exact same address. Oh, it's also the amount of each token. Okay, says Roger. Uh, that has fallen to nothing. Um, are the tokens there or the accounts gone? If the accounts are gone, then you probably just need to add them back again. You may have inadvertently reset it. But if you see the accounts and they just say zero, well, that's weird. Um, I would say maybe reinstall Ledger Live. Do that reset, right? Um, boobity boom over in help, right? We talked about that. You do the reset, uh, or just like keep trying until it works. A lot of times, and this is a little sage advice from a, a computer troubleshooter. A lot of times something weird happens and you freak out and you think something's messed up. And so you go full tilt, you know, you pull out your joust, joust or whatever, and you go charging at that windmill with every... Uh, tech trick in the book and you wipe your disk clean and you reinstall windows and you reinstall the ledger software and you you know you restore from backup phrase i mean you just do all this stuff that gets you in a tizzy and when really maybe you should have just kept trying the same thing over and over again till it finally works i've seen that happen many times where you pull something up it doesn't work you freak out and you start troubleshooting when really you just needed to keep trying the same thing over and over. Now, I'm not trying to like disparage you or anything. And I think you said originally when you sent the email that uh, you already tried rebooting or whatever. But yeah, I mean, reboot, reboot your computer, uh, reset your modem, do all that stuff first before you start like uninstalling, reinstalling and doing all kinds of heavy duty troubleshooting. Um, that, you know, clear the cache, see if that works first. Um, uh, I guess you're going to have to do the research. I, I can't see your screen, so I don't know what you're seeing. Like a lot of times people will tell me, oh, this, this is blank, right? I don't see any of my accounts. They're all gone. Well, that's maybe because you reinstalled, you reset Ledger Live or you're on a fresh machine or a fresh install. All you got to do is hit add account and then connect your device and have it scan for accounts, right? Do, do not run and start trying to reset this thing, right? Check Ledger Live, maybe reinstall Ledger Live on a fresh machine and connect your device. Skip setup on the fresh install, go straight to the Ledger Live account interface and just connect your device and start adding accounts, right? It should look for, it should find, like I need to get into Bitcoin, right? Um, Right. When it starts scanning for accounts from your device, when you're in the Bitcoin app, it's going to find all of the accounts that are see, maybe are, they're gone now. But I don't know. I don't know what your screen says. If your accounts like are there, but the balances are zero. I don't know. Maybe somebody hacked you if they, they somehow sucked all your 
uh, your balance is out. But that seems kind of odd, right? I don't know. It depends on, you know, what you've been doing. Uh, did you download some sort of weird uh, ledger helper app for your browser? Those things are nasty. Don't mess around with those. Did you get contacted by somebody who said they were from Ledger Support, who asked for your 24-word recovery phrase? I don't think you would do that, Roger. Um, I just think that some your, your Ledger Live is glitched out. Just try it on a different machine and see what happens, right? I'm sure your your coins are safe and sound. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's kind of where we're at with that. I mean, it's weird that you're not seeing that, like you, you had a Bitcoin account, right? And that you know there was 0 0.06 Bitcoin in there. And now Ledger Live is reading it as bit, Bitcoin zero, uh, dollar value zero, dollar value zero. That's weird. I don't know what would cause that besides the somebody moving it out or you moving it out or the or ledger's just glitched out it reinstall ledger do a reset it comes down to computer troubleshooting to a certain point okay so i'm sorry we're getting bogged down in tech support here let me uh look here uh do you plan to set up a node and stake 30 who keeps why do they keep asking me about this 32 ease I do not have 32 ETH. I don't think I ever will. Uh, stake 30. So if so, can you do a tutorial when the time comes? Why do you keep asking me that? That seems odd. You're, you're bordering on spamming there. I don't know, Nick T. But I'm not going to not going to disappear you <laughs> down the rabbit hole. Uh, Ledger fan. Are you guys fans of Ledger? Orange man bad. Who said that? Orange man bad. I'm, my seven-year-old might uh, tend to disagree with you. Why did the Democrats want to ban crypto? Never heard that one. That's kind of weird. Uh, Scott Lee's here. Hello, Scott. That's good. Uh, is dad frozen? I don't know. Am I frozen? Uh, thanks. Good. Yeah. Did I freeze? Sorry if I did. I think I'm still okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, why don't you like XRP and what do you think is the sparker? Why don't I like XRP? Um, I um, First of all, XRP is not a pure cryptocurrency. I'm a cryptocurrency fan. Uh, it is a company controlled by, it is a coin that is controlled by one company who owns the majority of the shares. In that sense, it's not a pure crypto. That is not... Uh, an indictment of it in any way or form is just philosophically it's not a decentralized uh, cryptocurrency right it's just a company that uses blockchain uh, that's good you can like that I particularly don't myself uh, the coin the the price action on ethereum it's dead in my portfolio it was a it was a dollar when I bought it uh, I held on to it for years uh, since 2017, watch it go up and down and up and down. It went up to 30, then it went back down to like 20, and I just got sick of like waiting for it. Right when it was when I broke even on it, when it was like around 29, 30 or whatever, a few a month or so ago, I just ditched it. Uh, that's why I, I don't dislike it. It's just not in my portfolio anymore. Uh, so, and this whole this whole spark thing seems fishy to me. I don't get it. Why, if you're going to give away your coin, what does it have to do with my my XRP? You want to you want me to like put a special code in my XRP to tag it so that you can see that I have it and that I've got your tag. And then once I do that, you'll give me some of your spark token. Your worth. You'll give me your worthless tokens once I open up my XRP account to you so that you can see my balance or whatever. I don't know. It just seems weird. So, sorry. I mean, a lot of people are asking me about that. Hey, free Spark. Ooh, I have XRP, so I got free Spark. Okay. I'm just not going to do a video on that. It seems like a scam to me. I'm not saying it is a scam. I'm just saying to me it seems like it's a scam, so I'm not going to. Do you have video staking Zill? No, I didn't know you could stake Zillquill. Or maybe I did. 
I don't think so. I didn't do staking Zill. No, no, I think somebody just asked me about Zill. It's got its own uh, standalone app. It's one of those apps that you have to download a th third party wallet to, but I didn't know you could stake on it. It's pretty cool. Ocean token, is it ERC20? I believe Ocean is an ERC20 token. Do you still, okay. <laughs> Oi, I wish I had 32 ETH, okay. Uh, I like XRP and have some. There's 100 billion in total supply. It's going to make millions of dollars and move that mark. I sure hope that you get rich with XRP. I really do. Um, I just gave up on it myself. I'm not saying it's a bad token. I'm not saying that you know you shouldn't hold it. I'm just saying for me, I I I got rid of it. Mm -hmm. Can't get a copy of my electric bill to Binance for security verification. Save file says 1.7 mil. When I send it to them, it fails. Says larger than five. That I don't know about. Um, Although I think you can, uh, I have Adobe uh, Cloud account for my video editing and everything. So, but in Adobe Acrobat, I don't know about Adobe Reader, but Adobe Acrobat, you can reduce file size. But you're telling me that it says that it's 1.7 megabytes. And then uh, when you try to send it to Binance, they say it's larger than 5M. Uh, but I think you can reduce a an Adobe uh like a picture, Adobe, like a scan of your electric bill, smaller than 1.7. That seems rather large. Um, I don't know. I think mine are usually JPEGs when you take a picture. Well, no, no, no. I'm sorry. When I scan something and with my HP scanner, it comes out as a PDF. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, maybe try it from a different i don't know i don't know how to troubleshoot something like that with binance try it from a different computer try it from a different location i know that sounds weird because i don't want to move to a different location this is my home this is my pc it should be working yeah i, I know i get it um i don't know what to say about that um sucks maybe take a picture of it with your phone and try to upload it that way? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, have I tried HoneySwap yet? I no, I don't think so. Try clearing your cash. Okay. I don't think it's a scam because free sparks will be issued on BitTrue. Okay. You don't think it's a scam? More power to you. I didn't say it was a scam. I said to me, it seems like a scam. That's just me. I'm getting old and grouchy. Too old for this job. Like the cop that punched Michael Corleone. Use a phone cam. Right, there you go. Hello, fellow Michigander. How does it feel to be finally free? Dan Westra. Hey, Dan. Good to have you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I wanted to do some... Uh, we wanted to do some yield farming today, right? And so uh, we wanted to start with... I'm going to stick with Brave. I'm going to try Brave. Okay. So, um, let's see where we're at. Well, let's go over here to balance. Right? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I, okay. I got 148 BNB in my uh, uh, Binance US account. All right. Um, let's go quickly over to Uniswap first. Uh, let's try Uniswap. All right. Um, haven't had much luck with it in Brave, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be. All right. So it wants me to connect to a wallet. I'm gonna accept this update. It wants me to connect to a wallet, right? So um, MetaMask, right? All right. So there's my MetaMask. There's some ETH in there. Not a lot. Uh, let's connect to that. Let's see if that works. We'll hit MetaMask. All right. It's happy. All right. Let's hit next and connect. All right, okay. All right, so I'm connected. Now it should say that I have some ETH in there now, right? But does it? It's not, it's not behaving well. If I'm connected to this wallet, it should say that I have some ETH in it. But 
but it doesn't. Okay, there it is. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we've connected to a uh, MetaMask account, which is my preferred wallet for dealing with Uniswap. You can use uh, Trust Wallet on your phone and with uh, Wallet Connect. And it works, but it can glitch sometimes, right? And uh, also we can connect our ledger to our MetaMask account, right? So if we go up here and we say connect to hardware wallet, we could connect to uh, MetaMask that way and then connect that MetaMask wallet to our Uniswap that way. Like I said, I there's, there's issue, I guess my first issue was privacy, right? So if you're holding the bulk of your crypto on your ledger device, you don't really wanna expose all that to the open internet, so to speak, right? Nothing is really private, and I think, uh, I can't remember his name, uh, nice guy, he, he said, nothing is private, so why worry about your privacy? Okay, I sort of get that. I'm kind of like, let's keep it compartmentalized, right? If I've got, say, uh, you know, uh, three grand worth of crypto on my ledger, I would prefer to sort of keep that as my long-term storage and then send some of that into a standalone MetaMask to do some trading, right? St so that they're separate. Um, so that they're separate ETH addresses, right? Of course, we can trace ETH addresses back pretty easily, right? They're not really private, but that's just compartmentalization, right? And then the other one was the glitch factor, right? So when I go to make a trade on Uniswap, and the only thing between me and a great new cool token is signing it with my device and then it glitches, that's gonna PO me, right? So I tend to try to keep things as simple as possible. All right, so we have a, a wallet with some ETH in here, 0.1 ETH, which is not a lot of ETH, right? How do we fund this wallet? Well, we could go over to Binance US and uh, send some ETH over there. I don't have much ETH, but uh, let's see, let's see if I can buy a little with my US dollar here, just for the heck of it, right? Let's hit market. Uh, it's probably gonna tell me something like it has to be at least 10 bucks or something, I don't know, let's try. Uh, it doesn't like that. Let's try maybe 93%. Okay, it worked. All right, so we got ourselves a little bit of ease in here. And so, okay, um, I could have just as easily uh, used, you know, there was money in the US dollar account. We can just deposit money using uh, a wire transfer or a debit card or a bank or whatever, right? I guess it's just wire. I don't know what's going on with Binance US, but you can use it in the US, right? So I'm trying to keep it focused tonight on people that are in the US that don't have access to Binance, right? All right, so we've got a little bit of um, Ethereum, right? And let's put it in our wallet. So while well, we go over here to MetaMask, what's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Nothing. Okay, nothing, that's good. All right, so uh, we click this to uh, copy the Ethereum address into our clipboard, all right? And then let's go over to our Ethereum and let's hit withdraw. And uh, we'll paste that address in there. Now we are withdrawing to an ERC20 address, right? We're not withdrawing to a BEP20 address. That would allow us to do that. That's kind of weird. Uh, and then let's max it out. Let's just take it all. It's not that much anyway. Let's hit submit. All right, we're gonna need the uh, Google Authenticator of my uh, Binance US account. So I'll just pull that up on my phone. Uh, one, three, seven, eight, two, one, and off it goes. All right, so uh, I do that a lot. Uh, oh, oh, it wants me to confirm it. Okay, 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 okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Binance and Binance US do things a little different. All right, so I got to go to the email and hit confirm, which I thought I just did. Click confirm. Okay, so there, we just confirmed it. All right, now we'll go to withdraw history. We'll switch over to withdraw and we'll uh, switch to crypto. And we can see that the ETH is processing out. There is the address that it's sending to. Is that my uh, MetaMask wallet? I believe so, yeah, 804, 
8408 at the end and 9 dB at the beginning. Yes. All right. So we're sending some ETH. We're funding this wallet, right? So uh, those of you who, who uh, are just getting into this DeFi thing and are trying to use Uniswap, uh, first thing you need to learn is how do you connect it, right? I think we sh I showed you that, right? You've got to have your uh, MetaMask wallet running in your browser uh, for this to work, right? If you don't uh, know how MetaMask works, then uh, I would suggest that you check out uh, my MetaMask video uh, for 2020. I'll just copy that and paste that in there. Right. So that's the MetaMask video shows you how to get MetaMask set up, right? Installed in your browser, right? So, but I'm assuming you've done that, right? And so now uh, we're gonna we're trying to fund it, right? So let's see here. What I don't have anything in here. I think once we get that. Uh, money once we get that eth we might have enough to actually do a little trade here let's do a little trade and see what happens right oops i don't need that I'm just waiting for that money to come in i keep calling it money it's not money it's crypto um okay okay we did that all right still processing actually i think we'll like get an alert all right We'll get an alert when it's been processed out. While I'm waiting for that point 0.4, let's go ahead and make a small purchase so that I can show you how that works. Right, so um, we're going to select a token here. Did it come in? No. Um, oh, all right, so I need to select a list, right? There's lots of lists that we can choose from. One inch is not bad. Uh, there's the Uniswap default list. Uh, there's the coin gecko list let's just for the heck of it doesn't matter which list you choose right uh, to, unless you know something special about the list right um, and then we were um, what was the one let's do polka uh, I just want to show you if we have a weird token and we want to add it uh, come on next um let's do polka helper it's it's relative it's a relatively new token that is probably not in that list right so okay we could just choose one from the list that'd be fine if we know what it is right we know we want to buy it we just choose it right from the list boom um we can buy some why is the, it's still not showing me the all right okay so apparently I've got enough for that, right? And I can just buy it, right? Now, is it the coin that I want? I don't know, maybe. Uh, there are there are a lot of coins on here. You have to be careful what you're doing. Um, if And sometimes even the logo might look the same, right? But maybe it's not, right? So what, it's, what about Polka? Um, let's try that, Polka, P-O-L, okay, it's there actually, P-O-L-S. Is it there or is it not there? <laughs> well, we can make sure if we go over here uh, and click to get that contract address in our uh, clipboard. And then when we go back to Uniswap and we choose the token, we can simply paste in that contract address. And lo and behold, the POLS comes up, right? That's how we know for sure. Now, sometimes it won't even be in the list and you have to manually add it. All right, but we didn't really have to do that. Um, okay, so uh, how much am I getting? Am I getting, whoops. I should be getting point, oh, oh it's not much, doggone it. It's not a lot. It's kind of it's kind of hard to do this because it's small, but let's try it anyway. Um, let's spend 0 0.05. All right, that'll get us, that'll net us 44 POLS. Now, when I hit swap, sometimes you have to confirm the token if you've never. Actually, I think if you buy it, you don't have to confirm it. Let's just confirm the swap. 
Now we go over here and you see that it's going to charge us $1.82 to do this swap, which is kind of a little bit outrageous, but let's hit confirm anyway. Uh, because the Ethereum network is overloaded. Right? So um, hopefully this will go through. We'll just give it a minute. Um, future money retracted a few. Crypto knowledge came from Rex. That's so nice of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully this this will go through so that I can demo how to set up do a pool. I got something exciting when we still got time. So hang on to your hats, guys. Uh, this may or may not go through. Um, this is the problem with Uniswap right now is that the Ethereum network is overloaded. The uh, transaction fees are pretty high. So um, things are moving kind of slow. But I'm just going to be patient. Hopefully that'll go through. And hopefully I'll get some more ETH in there that we withdrew. But we only withdrew a small amount. I, I should have maybe put some more ETH in there. But that's okay. I'm just kind of trying to show you what's going on here. Hey, it worked. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so it went through. That's good. And so now I should have some POLS. Okay, boom. All right, good. So we swapped uh, two ETH for uh, 44 POLs, POLs. All right, good. And our ETH balance went down, All right? So that's a swap. I right, noticed that uh, when I logged into uh, Uniswap, I didn't have to set up an account. I didn't have to give them my email address. I didn't have to give them any KYC. I didn't have to upload my utility bills. Uh, I can simply use their platform by connecting to my own personal wallet. So it saves you hassle, uh, saves you um, putting your personal information at risk. You know, uh, every time you upload your personal information to a uh, anywhere, uh, be it uh, Amazon or uh, Binance or Coinbase or whatever, there's a possibility that someone could hack their exchange and steal your personal information. Your personal information has been entrusted to them, right? Hey, I think that that extra ETH came in, right? So let's take a look. It wasn't a lot of extra ETH, right? All right, so now, okay, so, okay. It says here that I have 44 pulls. Why don't I see it on my MetaMask wallet? Okay, I need to add the token. So let's search for it, P-O-L-S, it's not in there. Okay, so let's go back over to our uh, Ge CoinGecko uh, for P-O-L-S. Let's hit click to copy. Let's go back to our MetaMask wallet. And now we need to go back down to add token again. And this time we'll go to custom token and paste in that contract address. Notice it auto fills token symbol and decimal. Let's hit next. And the 44 polls are there. I think I did this last week. All right, and there they go. All right, so we got uh, $18 worth of POLS, and we've got about $32 worth of uh, ETH in our MetaMask wallet. Let's go back to Uniswap. It's still connected to that wallet. Now what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to show you guys how to uh, take part in a liquidity pool. So let's hit pool here. All right, we want to. Uh, we're going to add some liquidity to their pool. It uh, not only is it not a centralized exchange, uh, but the liquidity pools where people come to trade are uh, contributed by users. Right. So we just made a swap uh, of ETH to Pauls. Now there was a liquidity pool that was available to us when we did that. That was, and that liquidity was provided by users who got a piece of the trading fees. I'd like to do that myself, right? So let's hit add, wait, before we do that, let's go over to, uh, let me see if I can find this. Let me see. 
Okay. It's over here. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. All right. Uniswap uh, ROI. Let's just take it over to Brave. Ah, no, I'm just going to. I'll leave it in uh, Chrome here. Let's go to pools. Um, all right. Uh, whoops. Whoops. I'm just going to copy this into your. So you guys can go there too if you want. You have to sign up for an account, but whatever. Uh, it's free, right? But they will give you the highest yielding uh, liquidity pools right now. Notice that my liquidity pool that I was that I'm about to create is kind of far down on the list right now, only 39.69 percent, right? So it's kind of peaked, right? Because last week I think this was number two or number one, right? So it's it's not a set and forget, right? You've got to if you if you're going to enter into a liquidity pool, you want to keep track of it probably on a daily basis to see if it's giving you the yield that you're after, right? So right now ETH House is number one. And that's giving us a 349 uh, APR, 28% uh, over 30 days, which is pretty good, right? That's if the price holds out, right? That's based on the current price right now. So if the coin, if house coin tanks or ETH tanks, then you're not going to get that return on your investment, right? This would be if the price stays the same, right? I don't know. I don't know. They, they figure a lot. But anyway. We're just going to, I'm just going to show you how to create the, uh, the, the, to participate in the liquidity pool. We'll hit add liquidity. Uh, it's going to be ETH and Pulse, right? Those are the only two coins I've got in here, right? I'm just going to max the Pulse out and use what's left of the ETH, right? That's going to give us some uh, ETH left over because we're going to need that for our, uh, look for our transaction fee. So don't max out the ETH. Uh, if I did, I wouldn't have enough polls anyway, right? I'm just going to max the polls, all right? Now, uh, first I need to approve POLS. I have to approve spending of it from within this wallet. That's going to cost me 54 cents. Okay. Hopefully that'll go through right away too. I don't want to have to wait for that, but it, we will. Uh, we'll see. Usually the approvals don't take that long. Uh, okay. And we're going to do something tricky here in a minute. Like I'm just, I'm, I just want to get through this for those of you who are interested in Uniswap, right? Uniswap is hot. It's kind of maybe on the downside, who knows? But like I said, there, there's other hotter liquidity pools that you could participate in, right? And the idea here is, okay, I've got crypto sitting around and I want to get a return on that. Even if the price stays normal, uh, I would rather that I earn a little bit on my cryptos. Like if we go over here, you'll notice there that we've got highest yield, and then we also have highest liquidity. And uh, wrapped ETH, or ETH and wrapped Bitcoin are the highest liquidity. Uh, but these are very stable compared to these high yields, right? So if you've got if you're sitting on a mountain of Bitcoin and or Ethereum that's just gathering dust in your cold wallet, perhaps you would want to uh, stake it in this liquidity pool. Now, when you do this, you're not depositing it with them. You're just giving them, pardon me, giving them the use of it and you're maintaining the private, the private key is stored on your device, right? Remember, I, I'm using a standalone uh MetaMask wallet. So the private key is stored in my browser somewhere on my computer or whatever. Uh, it's not on my ledger device, which is a little more secure. But for this, uh, maybe you, maybe if you want to use your uh, hardware device, maybe you feel more comfortable if it's $10,000 worth of crypto or whatever, um, that you're going to be uh, dropping into this liquidity pool. You can play it safe, like the ETH and the US dollar coin trading pair. You provide some liquidity to that. You're gonna get a 23 APR 
uh, annual percentage yield, which is pretty darn good compared to a savings account in the U.S. at a bank, right? ETH Pickle, that's interesting. No, no, it was Pickle, right? So you can, okay, good, it confirmed. Yay, all right. All right, so uh, we've got Paul's approved for spending, right? Now, the last thing we need to do is supply, and it should, this, this should become active here in just a second since the, the approval went through there. All right, so now we can supply the liquidity. I am not supplying that much liquidity. It's less than 0.01 share of the pool. Uh, it's not a whole bunch of ETH. Um, this is ETH per Pauls and Pauls per ETH. Let's hit supply and see what happens. All right, we're gonna get Pauls, ETH Pauls tokens back and we'll hit confirm supply. And then we have to confirm it uh, and it's going to cost us another $2.10. We'll hit confirm there. And hopefully that'll go through. It probably will because this is not a hot pool right now. I'm just It's just sort of an example. And let's hope that that goes through. And so we can move on. Uh, you can stake on in Ledger Live too. That's another way to earn interest on your crypto. Uh, I own 1.5 Uniswap. That's pretty cool. <laughs> when do you see $10 XRP? <laughs> uh, you familiar with how to partake in purchasing ICOs? Um, Initial coin offering, um, usually you, you really have to be close to the people that are behind the project to get in on the ground floor on those. They usually sell out like within a few minutes sometimes, maybe an hour, within an hour or two. So you kind of have to really be on top of that. And it basically involves uh, you uh, uh, spending some Ethereum to purchase this brand new token. Uh, an ICO, right? And it's a smart contract. Um, this Uniswap is a way to sort of get a hold of a brand new coin, maybe not the ICO, but when it's brand new, uh, before it gets listed on exchanges and maybe takes off, this might be the way to get it on the ground floor. And that's why a lot of people are using Uniswap right now, because they find some hot token and they hear about it on Telegram or through their guru or on a YouTube influencer uh, guy and he says this is the next great coin it's going to the moon you can't get it on Binance or Coinbase yet but you can get it on oh no it failed I can't believe it are you kidding me oh man <laughs> oh man doggone it I wanted to move on too I didn't want to have to deal with this your uni breakdown oh okay all right, let's uh, refresh here and see what happened. Um, hmm, that's weird. I'm gonna try one more time. Uh, I should have plenty, you know what? Let's not use all the Pauls. Let's just use 20, 42, just for the heck of it. Whoops, all right? I don't know, just leave a little leftover, just for the heck of it. All right, let's hit confirm. Uh, and then let's jack it up a bit. Let's jack it up to 233, just for the heck of it. All right, I'm speeding up the transaction. Try, hopefully that this thing will go through so we don't have to. I just want you to see what it looks like when you're done. That's all. And then you can, you'll be able to like track your liquidity pool and see. Maybe it's just too small. I don't know uh, for this. Hmm. Uh, hi, uh, will the ledger create a new address after each use? The ledger uh, live Bitcoin, and I not Ethereum, but Bitcoin, uh, does create... Okay, there, it went through. Okay, finally. Yeah, the, the ledger uh, live uh, will create a new sending address each time you use the ledger device. Uh, only, and it will always create a new one if the one you created before actually received some coins, right? So if the balance is still zero on that address, it hasn't received any Bitcoin in it, 
the next time you you hit add address or whatever or show address it's going to be the same address but once you get some bitcoin in on that address uh the next time you go to use your uh ledger and create a, an address it will be a brand new address that increases privacy and security a bit right uh, but you can keep sending to the exact same old address over and over again. It'll always get to the wallet, right? If you just keep an address in your clipboard and use it every time you withdraw from uh, Coinbase or Binance or whatever to that, it'll always go into the wallet, right? The the new address it just sort of breaks up the transactions so that they're, they're not all in the same history of that sending address, right? That's not very private. Yes. Oh, Thomas, thank you. That was nice of you. Thank you for all of us are truly a light. That's that's very touched. I'm, I'm all is light. We know that, right? You are all light. We are all light. We're all light together. All right. So let's take a look at what our liquidity is going to look like once we get it there. That's what I was trying to show you. OK, so we, now we can go down to manage and then we can go over here and look at it and see What's going on, baby? Okay, we got $34 invested in this thing, and we might be earning some fees on it. We might not, right? Yeah, we, we are. We'll be, we'll be getting fees. All right, so that's Uniswap, right? Showed you how to trade, how to fund your uh, wallet. I showed you how to uh, participate in a liquidity pool. I showed you how to track it after the fact. So um, it was all fast, but you guys can go through that later if you want. You can rewind the video. Check it out. Now I'm going to do something cool. All right, we're going to check out this new thing called Pancake Swap. Oh, I can't spell pancake. What's wrong with me? I can't spell pa pancake. <laughs> okay. I don't want pancakes, right? Do I? All right, no. No, I'm not going to connect with MetaMask right now. I can't. Um, ah, well, let me show you what happens. Uh, uh, nothing. Um, it should have said wrong network, but it didn't. Okay. All right. Ah, because we need to do something first. All right. Let me show you. There's a couple of things we need to do. Now, I'm going to assume that you do not have access to Binance proper. This is much easier if you have access to Binance proper because you can withdraw Binance coin directly uh, into a Binance smart chain from Binance, but you can't from Binance US. Boo hoo, hooey, pooey, pooey on UE, UE, UE. Why not? I don't know. All right, so if we go to withdraw BNB, uh, it only lets me withdraw BNB to a BEP2 address. Why not? Why won't it? Why doesn't it support Binance Chain? I don't know. Smart Chain, pardon me. Binance Smart Chain. Hmm. What the hell is Binance Smart Chain? Let's find out. All right. So um, Binance Binance Smart Chain in MetaMask. All right. So. Okay, here we go. All right, so how are we going to do this, right? If we want to play with our pancakes you know, on the Binance Smart Chain, uh, this is not what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. Okay. All right, we know how to set up uh, MetaMask, right? We, we've done that. All right, now here's the meat of it right here. I'm going to copy this into the clipboard. Um, <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to figure out what to do next first. I know what, I know what to do next and what, what to do first. Let's go ahead and do this part first. All right. So, uh, let's open up another tab in the browser. This is a little tricky because, um, MetaMask will, uh, all right. First of all, let's, let's copy one of the, this is mainnet right let's copy one of these in our clipboard let's do this data seat too 
Nincoin, right? Copy. All right. Let's go back here. We need this information, right? Mainnet. All right. Let's go over here to MetaMask. Let's go back. Uh, we can use this wallet. That's fine. So we're going to go over here to Accounts. Follow me. You might want to rewind the video. We're going to go down to Settings here. All right. And then down in Settings, there's a place for Networks. We go to Networks. Now we want to add a network, right? So we're going to hit Add Network. We're going to call this one Binance Smart Chain. If I could spell chain, I would be happy. All right. Now, our, our RPC, our URL, that's that thing I just copied into my clipboard. Chain ID, up here, 56, right? 56. Uh, symbol, BNB. All right. Uh, block Explorer. I'm not going to go over here and copy this into my clipboard because if I do that and this disappears, the whole thing disappears and I have to start over again. So I need to keep this open. So I'm going to copy this in. I'm just going to type it in. HTTPS colon slash slash. I put in too many T's. All right. And then it is B Binance Smart Chain scan whoops binance smart chain scan.com all right we're gonna double check that to make sure we got it right https colon slash slash bsc scan.com let's hit save all right now we're on the binance smart chain now let's go back over to pancake swap let's hit unlock wallet we'll use metamask this time and boom we got it all right, so we got the wallet connected, right? Now we need to get some Binance coin in here, right? And how in the heck are we going to do that? Well, since we can't go to Binance, we're going to need to somehow convert our BNB to Binance Smart Chain. Uh, and apparently, it uh, you can't do it from by withdrawing from uh, Binance US. But there's a there where there's a will, there's a way. Let's do uh, Binance. Smart chain extension. Where is that thing? There it is. Binance chain wallet. Okay. So we want this Binance chain wallet. We're going to add this to Brave. Uh, add extension. Uh, okay. It's been there. It's in there. All right. Um, okay. Now, is it going to make me go through all this? Er, eh, er. Doggone it. Pooies. Ah, uh, okay. I'm just gonna create. I'm just gonna do it over here, so you don't see my. Uh, I don't want you to see my seed phrase. Okay. All right. Uh, I do not own a wallet. I'm gonna enter a strong password. Continue. All right, there's my. Okay, I can just click that to continue. All right, I'm just gonna go over here. Sorry, you guys, I can't show you this part because I'm. Whoops. Okay. All right, let's do this. Huh. Okay. All right. All right. So I got that. Uh, I'm going to hit continue. Okay. It wants to know. All right. So after I hit continue, I don't mind. I don't care if you see these. All right. Let's get back over here. Ah. Please tell me it's not going to start me all over again. What happened? Ah, doggone it. Why did it do that? Okay. Well, it kind of screwed me because I was in the middle of trying to set it up. Ah, damn it. <sighs> Shouldn't have moved it. Shouldn't have moved it. 
so I don't know where the backup phrase is, but I'm not gonna fret. Well, am I? I don't wanna screw around with this. Damn it. All right. Shit. Okay. Where's my soup? Where is the where are the settings for Pete's sake? Okay. Okay. That just says currency. Uh, manage accounts. Okay. Nope. Well, somehow I lost it. Now I can't pooies. Okay, whatever. I have the, the backup phrase over there, so I won't freak out, even though, as you can see, I'm freaking out. All right, no biggie. All right. Um, okay, Binance Marching. Okay, so we got two chains here. We've got the Binance Chain and we've got the Binance Smart Chain, right? So here's our Binance Chain. Now we only want uh, Binance coin here. All right, so I'm going to withdraw some the Binance coin and let's hope this works. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. I, I'm at a I'm at a uh, disadvantage here because I don't have Binance. Binance would have let me what withdrew straight into Ether. Uh, all right, but that's okay. Let's hit withdraw. It's only BEP, so boom. There's our BEP. Let's do the max. All right. Uh, let's do this. Um. Okay. Binance five nine three seven six six. I hope a hacker does oops damn it come on let's try this again uh, okay okay we'll get through this i know we will all right we'll go to email and verify okay there we go oh did i finally get my bat okay okay now, I think from here, I can do MetaMask. So let's hope so. Now, we are going to have to wait for this. I've been waiting for my... There it is. Huh. I've been waiting for my bat from Uphold for this month. All right. I don't know what happened. It was weird. Uh, I, it was asking me to verify my. Uh, it was asking me to verify my. Uh, did I do that right? Y M A. Did I send it to the right place? See, this is where when you doubt yourself, right? Withdraw. Crypto. Yeah, that's it. K U M Y A. All right. I'm sending that BNB to my Binance Chain wallet, and the reason I'm doing that is because I need to convert it to Binance Chain coin in order to use Binance, Binance Smart Chain to use Pancake. Right? There's a method to my madness here, although it's a weird method, right? If I'm in regular Binance, I can just withdraw to a B a Binance Smart Chain BNB address. It'll let you do that. But for some reason, Binance US does not. Go figure. So we gotta we gotta figure out how, how to convert it to Binance Smart Chain. But we will. Pancake swap. We're making pancakes, and we're gonna get there. I know we are. We're gonna we're gonna make syrup. We are. We're gonna get some syrup going. Uh, we just need to wait for this withdrawal. Um, all right, so, um, all right, I have no, we got the, the exchange, okay, okay, I can connect to my, uh, oh, I can connect to, but I'm not going to do that, and the reason why, and I did this yesterday, when you connect to the Binance Smart Chain, you can actually buy and sell on the exchange, but you can't farm, go figure, I don't know what the heck the problem with that is, uh, we're going to use MetaMask, right? And we're going to connect to that account that's got zero BNB in it, right? Okay. All right, we're good. 
right? There's no BNB in here right now, but that's okay. Um, let's go over here. Oh God, I hope this works. <laughs> man, it's nerve wracking. It's 150 bucks, man. It's nothing to sneeze at. But we'll get it. Fresh syrup from Michigan. We'll get it. We're going to go a little over tonight anyway, obviously. So, okay, and I'm freaking out. Why isn't it here yet? So what do we do? We go check over here. Uh, here. And we make sure that it's on its way out. It's still processing. Crypto withdrawal. Still processing. So we'll just have to wait. Uh, let's see. More of a waffle guy. Uh, I mean, it's trust capital for investing crypto. Some butter. I don't think there's any butter. No sausage. Uh, come on. Come on, you can do it. Once I get all this done, you'll like go, ah, now I see why he was doing that. Come on, BNB. Why is BNB taking so long to withdraw from Binance US? It's that Kathleen Coley. She's mad at me. I don't know. She's so American. <laughs> She's like, Binance is like, we're totally Asian centric, but we're going to hire an American to run Binance US. Of course you would. Why wouldn't you? Right? She's probably. <laughs> I'm sure. I don't know. Does she speak Chinese? That would be cool. If she spoke Chinese, she'd have. You would think they would want to hire somebody that spoke Chinese to run Binance US, right? Because at some point, you're going to have to speak to somebody that doesn't speak English over at Binance Maine, right? If you got a problem with whatever, logistics or whatever. Where's those paper clips I ordered, right? From my Binance US office, right? I don't know, you gotta talk to the guy in Shanghai who's in charge of paper clips, or he's in Malta actually, whatever. But he doesn't speak English, what are you gonna do? So I would, if I were CZ, I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna hire a CEO to run my Binance US, but you know, I'm doing interviews, but you gotta speak like fluent Mandarin or what is the other one? There's another one too, the Southern Chinese one, Cantonese, right? I mean, it'd be a lot to ask someone to speak both, right? From in the US, right? Can you speak Mandarin and Cantonese? Well, I don't know, I can speak some Mandarin, a little Cantonese, come on, BNB. I'm really getting tired of waiting for this BNB, man. Ugh, God, it's gonna take all night. Oh, okay. All right, whatever. I can wait. Ah, uh, okay. We'll get through this together. Why do you call that spamming? Stop spamming, Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike. Yeah, why is Mike telling us what he owns? I don't know, Mike. Mike meme. <laughs> All right. When I first started this live stream, I was like getting spammed. I mean, I had people that were like cursing and holding down keys forever, like E. I don't know. It was just like I attracted the, the wrong element when I first started live because I didn't know any better. I didn't know how to like turn people off or like censor them or whatever. And like everyone in the live stream was like, yelling at them stop stop you know stop being so disrespectful but then i figured out how to like turn people off that were saying stuff i didn't like uh now i don't get those kind of people in here anymore but every now and then i'm babbling away at something and then i don't see it and someone's up there like spamming and hey check out this hacker he'll get all your bitcoin back um okay I would really love to do this pancake thing for you guys if this frigging BNB would come out of Binance US. Did it go? Oh my God, finally. Jeez, it took forever. Why didn't I get an email alert? And why isn't, okay, Whew, got it. All right, now, um, I think we can do this. 
let's try. All right, so we want to go to uh, MetaMask. And this is the, the, see we're on Binance Smart Chain here, right? There's the Binance Smart Chain account, right? Let's hit, let's copy that into our clipboard. Let's go over to our Binance Smart Chain wallet. And let's just send to this address, right? Ah, note cross-chain transfer to Binance Smart Chain, right? It knows what I'm trying to do. I don't need a memo. I'm not going to send it all. I seem to have trouble doing max on this, but I'm going to send five, throwing all cares to the wind, right? Okay, I'm going to send five BNB from my Binance Chain to my Binance Smart Chain. We'll hit send. Boom. We did it. Okay. Boom. Now, let's go to MetaMask. Boom. We got it. All right. All right. Now, let's cook some pancakes. All right. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a liquidity pool with cake. Right? So, I need to buy some. Can I buy cake on here? Oh, my God. I hope I can. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I can. Can I buy cake? Cake. 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 Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> For a second there, I was like, oh, shit, what if I can't buy cake? All right, we don't want to max it, right? Uh, let's just buy two. Uh, okay, it's not going to be a lot, all right? Notice how similar this is to um, Uniswap. Let's buy 2.3 cake. No, 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 what am I saying? What's it? Uh, we're going to need some Binance coin left over for our transaction fees, right? So let's not go hog wild. Let's go ahead and just stick with two Binance coin. That's like 40 bucks, right? Let's hit swap. And we're going to get 70 cake, right? Let's we'll swap. We'll hit confirm swap. Now watch. Uh, it comes up. It's I don't know what that is. It's very small. It's not much. Let's hit confirm. We'll hit close. It's pending. All right, so we just made a purchase uh, with Binance Coin for some cake. Boom. Transaction confirmed. Booyah. You see how fast that was? Much faster and much cheaper than uh, Uniswap, right? And that and decrepit old uh, bogged down Ethereum network, right? We're on the Binance Smart Chain now. All right, so now let's create some liquidity. We're going to hit add liquidity and we're going to choose Binance and we're going to choose cake, right? All right. Now let's just max the cake out because we 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 left over some that leaves us two Binance. That takes two. That leaves us some Binance left over. Maybe I could have gone a little higher, but I just played it safe. All right. Let's approve Now we need to approve cake for spending. So let's do that. Let's hit approve cake. All right. We're going to allow pancake swap. Only three cents. I can deal with that. All right. Notice how much faster this is. Um, there's a thing. Okay. Boom. It's done. All right. Now let's go back. Uh, oh, fart. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to do it. All right, let's try that again. All right, let's try that again. Uh, cake. Sorry about that. I was just approving the use of cake, right? Um, and we max out the cake. All right, let, now let's supply it. Sorry about that. All right. There we go again. Not too expensive. Close. All right, that's pending. Pancake swap info. Let's let the, okay, boom, that's done. Good. All right, let's go back. There, we've done it. We've made our uh, cake BNB pair. Um, so there we go. We can see we've got 71 cake and uh, about two BNB. And um, there's a uh, pancake. Huh. 
there's a pancake swap info it's on their Twitter page pancake whoops if I could spell pancake I would be a happy man okay let's go here um, there it is pancake info all right now uh, let's take our uh, come on come on there we go let's take our uh, pancake wa oh, first of all let's go to our pool all right there's our liquidity pool this is the pancake address <laughs> copy address all right um, let's go over here to this pancake info let's paste in our wallet address let's hit enter come on baby what are you doing to me <laughs> please tell me this works doesn't okay all right um, okay let's go over to Chrome apparently it's a browser issue that's okay I can deal with it paste okay all right let's go back and get our address once again ah, come on Rex no let's turn that one off okay all right let's get that again uh, let's try it in Chrome see if it works in Chrome I don't know it worked for me earlier but it's not working now for some reason okay Go figure. I don't know why this is not working for me. I did it earlier. Oh, wait. Accounts. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Load accounts. All right. There we go. So we got uh, 56. This is why we can track it, right? We got $56. Uh, dollars. I thought it was more than that. Wouldn't it more? Why is it less? Oh, no. Should be. I don't know. Total value swapped, one transaction, one fees paid. I don't know. Should be more. Did I lose a bunch? I don't know. <sighs> okay. I thought I had more in there. Right, so we we I thought we we put like a hundred and fifty dollars worth of B and B in here, and we bought some cake, and now we have some liquidity going here. Uh, well, let's find out. Um, let's see. Two BNB. Two BNB is fifty-six dollars and seventy cake. Was it fifty-six? Uh, seventy cake is fifty-five, right? So it should be by like a hundred bucks. Right. And then we left like 50 bucks left over in the, the BNB. Now let's play some tricks with this. We've got this liquidity and we've got this cake BNB token now. What can we do with it? Well, let's go over here to farm. Now you can see the reason I chose cake because I have cake BNB flip now, interestingly enough. So uh, cake BNB flip is... Uh, it's, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna flip my pancake right I'm gonna take that liquidity pool token that I currently have in this wallet and I'm gonna flip it and uh, stake that in their liquidity pool so let's hit select and notice I'm getting a 926 percent APY APY which is pretty good all right now uh, First, I need to approve cake BNB flip. Let's do that. It's going to cost me four cents. This is why I left plenty of BNB over on the side, so I wouldn't run out of BNB. We don't want that to happen, right? That would really mess us up. But I probably left maybe a little too much BNB over on the side, but that's okay. We could have maybe had a little more liquidity instead of 100, maybe 120 or 30. Okay, but that's been approved. Boom, fast, easy. All right, now that should, oh, okay, now we got the plus, right? So we hit plus. 
there we got 11 cake bnb flip that's our liquidity uh that's our liquidity tokens right the the cake bnb liquidity tokens let's max that one out All right let's confirm that we're gonna have to sign that transaction too it's gonna cost us a little bit let's confirm boom that's gonna take a minute notice how fast everything works on the the pancake swap this is the new fast uh decentralized liquidity pool right there i've just staked uh 11 of my cake bnb tokens pow um and i'm gonna be earning cake uh let's just hang for a second i think it's it might tick up one in a minute there this is a very small amount. Um, this is like a hundred bucks of, of liquidity that we're staking now. So first we pooled tokens. We participated in the liquidity pool. Now we're staking that flip token in here. Now I'm thinking though that that the, the liquidity pool is not. I'm not earning anything in the liquidity pool anymore because now I've taken those tokens and staked them over here. But this, I think the the APR, the return, is much better over here, right? Uh, while we're waiting for this, because we don't have a lot, let's go back over to exchange, and let's buy with like point zero, no wait, point three. Uh, let's do point four. Let's buy some more cake, so so we'll have cake. Let's buy a little more cake, right? I'm just like trying to skip ahead here. So we'll buy a little more cake so I can show you what you can do with the cake that you earn, right? Because I'm not going to sit here for a couple hours and wait to get 14 cake. I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. Now we go over here to farm. Oh, we're still earning cake, right? From this stake. We've staked these flip coins. We're still earning cake. But let's go over to staking. Now, what can we do with these cake toes? Now, first, <laughs> okay, we need to get some syrup, right? So we need, first we need to approve cake to spend. All right, that's going to cost me four cents. Don't be a penny pincher. If you want to, like, get real returns on your money, you don't want to be a penny pincher. Don't be, don't freak out over every little penny that you have to spend. Oh man, you just spent five cents. All right, now, see, there's my 14. I bought that, remember? But let's just assume that I earned that, right? Over time, maybe over probably tomorrow morning, it probably would have been 14. Maybe not, I don't know. Uh, let's hit max. Let's stake all our cake. Hit confirm. All right, we got to sign that with our wallet. We done that. Take a second. All right, there we go. So I staked cake and they gave me syrup. Uh, oh, okay. There's my syrup. Now we go over to the syrup pool. And we've got these other tokens that we can earn with our syrup. Um, it's just these two tokens right now. But this one just got approved today. So first I need to approve syrup, right? I got to approve being, I can spend my syrup. That's going to cost me another four cents. Right? I almost spent a buck now. All right, that got confirmed pretty quick. All right, now we can stake our syrup. <laughs> we got 14 syrup now. We'll max it out. We'll hit confirm. We'll sign that. All right, now we're earning syrup. Or no, no, no. Now we've staked our syrup and we're earning alpha. Kind of weird. So, come on. There it goes. All right, so now we're earning alpha. So let's take a look at our MetaMask wallet here. Um, it shows that we have zero cake and zero syrup, right? Because we've staked both of those for that other thing, that alpha. 
Well, I don't see alpha in here. Uh, a L P H A. Let's see if we can add it. A L P H A. Now we might have to. Hmm. I'm not sure how to get the. Well, maybe once it's in there. Nah, I won't do that. Oh, harvest. <laughs> Okay, maybe now it'll show up in there. Will it? That would be weird, wouldn't it? Nah, it's not going to show up in there. But, oh, it still says collecting. Okay. I'm not really sure. Okay. Still no alpha. Eh, I don't see it. Um, I'm sure you can figure out a way to see it in your wallet. There's a, uh, let's go check it out. Um, Alpha Homora. Um, Anyway, I'm sure there's a way to add the alpha coin to our MetaMask and so we can see it. Or maybe it will simply appear after it, we accumulate enough of it, right? Because you can see the syrup is there, the cake is there. Now we can unwind all of this if we want to. If we were like, hey, screw this, we can hit uh, unstake syrup, unstake it all. We'll confirm that. Spend another two cents on that. Hasa. Oops. Not a coffee. And of course, this would be okay. I was going to say that's the one that hung. All right now, when we go over here, we should see syrup. Right? See, there's our syrup. Now we can unwind the syrup. Right? If we want to. Let's go over to staking and unwind that syrup like because we're going to unstake the cake we'll unstake it all i'm wasting coins here we're wasting a little bit of money not much i'm not concerned about it i just want you to see that you can back out of all of this okay now, when we go to our MetaMask wallet, mind you, we're in the Binance Smart Chain. If you, if you jumped into this video, you have to set up Binance Smart Chain as a network in your settings. So rewind the video if you haven't figured that part out yet. All right now, there's the cake. Doing. We can also back out of the farming if we want. Right? If we want to select this. Now, look, we've earned 0.02 cake. Cake's going for 78 cents. Cake's no slouch, right? So we could harvest this cake, but it would probably be better to wait until it's accumulated more, but we can do that. We can just harvest the cake as, it, as we earn it, and it will accumulate pretty fast. You'll, I mean, this is pretty darn good re rate of return here. All right, so see it, it zeroed it back out again. So we can unstake this and go back to that original liquidity pool. And then if we do that, then we'll see that we'll have BNB. Well, no, we won't. We'll just have the, the LP, liquidity pool token. All right, so if we unstake from this, <laughs> everything's dumping is crypto dumping okay all right so now let's go back and look we should have that liquidity pool token in there now see there it is 11 point cake cake liquidity pool and then we can check that out over here in the liquidity pool 
right? And we could uh, remove that too and just go back to cake and BNB. If we do that, we can hit remove 100%. We got to approve that. Sign that again. Okay, now we can remove it. We'll confirm it. Sign it. Wait a minute. There, did it. Now we can check again, MetaMask, and we should have two BNB and 85 cake. I remember I bought a little cake so before we started so that I could have enough to do a liquidity pool. Um, so now we should be back to our like original 150 bucks. So if you want to see that in uh, forward motion again, right? We've got some BNB, we got some cake, right? We want to add liquidity. Let's uh, add BNB and cake. Let's max it out. I don't think I can do that. Uh, won't be enough left over. Let's just do 80. All right, let's hit supply, confirm sign wait for that the, you'll watch this BNB will go down because it's no longer BNB right it's it's like the liquidity pool token now all right what's that BNB should go down do, 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 do. Or is it didn't it didn't it work did it not work Okay, there, it's back. Oh, yeah, okay, the BNB went down. All right, so now we got our liquidity pool, 79 and 2. All right, now we can go to farm. We've got that cake BNB liquidity pool token, so we're going to flip it and stake it. All right, let's hit select. Let's stake it all. Oh, let's stake. Ah! Doggone it. <laughs> Hooey's. Shouldn't have done that. I just confirmed zero. All right. Let's, I'll wait for it to finish. Can I cancel? Yeah, let's just cancel. Let's try again. All right. This time we max it out. This time we confirm, sign. Now we should have, uh, now we'll just watch it earn cake all night. Like that other stuff that you do after, like the syrup and the, the other tokens that you can get, that's when, once you've earned some cake, right? I think we just staked all our cake. Staked cake. I think we're out of cake. Oh no, there's five cake left, all right? So like the cake we can earn, right? And we'll earn cake as time goes by very quickly, right? Because it's like, I don't know, 20 times uh, nine hundred percent APR. You earn the cake pretty quickly. The more you know, the stake, the more cake. The more you stake, the more cake. And the cake that you earn can be harvested, right? When you harvest the cake, it'll go into your wallet, and then you can go over to the uh, staking and stake your cake. Right? We can stake cake, and they'll give us syrup for our cake. We'll stake our pancakes and get some syrup. And after that, and notice these always happen really fast. Fast enough for me when I'm live. All right, and there we go. It's not a lot, but it's some, right? And now that we've got cake staked and uh, syrup balance, you can check over here too in MetaMask. You can see that now I have syrup in the wallet. We can go over to the syrup pool and start earning tokens, right? We can earn uh, trust wallet tokens or we can earn this alpha token, right? And we just hit plus. We'll stake all that syrup. We'll confirm it. And now we're like staked up to our ears. Earning, earning this goes. And what what will happen is the more cake that you earn, uh, you know, from your farming, the more you can add to this these other liquidities, right? So uh, like tomorrow, okay. So like tomorrow, I can go back over here and say, oh, now I've earned two cake, right? I can harvest the cake, and then it'll go into my wallet, 
and then I can go over here and stake more cake. Right? There'll be like more cake to stake. Right? Which would give me more syrup. And then I could go over to the syrup pool and like add to the syrup that I'm staking. Right? Uh, okay, woo! A lot of people have joined and they're asking me all kinds of unrelated questions. Guys, I'm really sorry, but I've been at this two hours. I gotta, to, uh, gotta knock off. Uh, hey, we're still in the Bitcoin bull run. Connect your ledger to the sync wallet. Uh, when you say local wallets, you mean your exchange wallet? I'm just curious. Uh, what are we talking about? Um, vet. Okay. There is a vet wallet. It's called the sync wallet. Uh, VE chain sync. Almost done, buddy. I'm almost done. Uh, okay. There it is. That's the sync. That's you download that and you run it, right? And then from there you can connect your ledger. I believe I already have it installed on this computer. Let's double check. QRS sync. All right, so you just download it from their website. All right, and um, you run it. And then uh, you can connect your ledger. Right, but um, doo -doo 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 -doo. what are we doing here? Oh, over here. Okay, here. So when you click this, uh, you have to connect your ledger and use your VE Chain app, right? So you'll have to have the VE Chain app installed on your device. And once you do that, it'll be like zero, right? Um, I've already done this, so on my ledger, it, there's a balance, right? I can check my balance. That's the, the balance, the VE Chain app on my ledger device. Right. So you want to make sure that you are in the VE Chain app. Right. You go to the Ledger Live Manager to install the VE Chain app. It's in here somewhere. There. Right. So once you're in the VE Chain app, then uh, you can send and receive VE Chain in the VE Chain Sync app. You can't use Ledger Live to manage your VE chain, right? But you can use Ledger Live to install the VE chain app on the device. But uh, you have to use this this third-party wallet to manage your VE chain balance. All right. I do have a video on sync. Yes, it's kind of old, but it looks like there hasn't been much change yet. You could like go crypto dad. Whoops. Yeah, there it is. Yes. Don't use... Hey, guys. Crypt just don't do the old one. Do the new one. There was an old one where there was this thing called Tor VE Thor website or something. That's defunct. Don't do that. Yeah. So there's the video. The step-by-stepper. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. Uh, happy cooking. Hope you guys make lots of money with your pancake. Um, I'll, I haven't done a standalone video for this, so I would follow. I would just rewind this live stream and watch because I leave the live streams posted. You can refer to those. I'll probably do a standalone video on this at some point. Happy farming, guys. I hope you guys got something you needed tonight. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. Yes. Don't forget, I do a live stream every Saturday, 9, a 6, 6, <laughs> 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me again for the live stream from Michigan where you can throw out questions. We'll talk about Bitcoin. We'll talk about the news. Uh, I'll move some crypto around. I'll do some demos for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.